April Dominguez <laughs> is the founder and CEO of Handsome App, which is a career and education network. It's been featured in TechCrunch, American Salon, Business Insider, and Modern Salon, amongst others. And she is the first Latinx founder to receive $100,000 from Google to start her business. Welcome back to the Hairdresser Strong Show. My name is Robert, and I'm your host. Today, I'm with April. How are you doing, April? I am fantastic. Thank you, Robert. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. I'm really look, I've been looking forward to talking with you. Yeah, likewise. We've had this on the docket for, for many months this year. A lot of things were interfering, but I'm glad that we can finally make it happen. Yeah, me too. Um, so I think today, uh, why don't we start off with uh, hearing about, you know, your story, um, how you got into this and uh, you know, your your why behind Handsome App. Um, or maybe actually we should start by you telling us a little bit about Handsome, Handsome App as well. Yeah, yeah, I can I can like blend it all together for sure and, and uh, start with all of the above. Um You know, so my story in the industry is a very non-traditional story, but I I think that that can be pretty common in the industry. There's, I feel like there's two paths, you know, there's one path where uh, there is the persona that always wanted to be a part of the industry and just grew up knowing that. And then there's the other path where uh, they started a different career path first, right? And then made a hard left turn and came into the industry. And so um, mine is a bit non-traditional. I actually um, am not originally from the beauty and barber industries. I started off my career in what really is a stark left turn in oil and gas and um, serving a, a totally different population of people. Um, you know, the industry today, 90% of hair stylists are female, 66% of barbers are black and Latinx. It's a highly diverse industry. It is um, the leading industry for women and one of the leading industries in diversity. And um, before this, I was in oil and gas. I was the fifth hire at an independent oil and gas startup. I worked directly underneath the CEO, did all of our operations. I was the operator integrator, um, implemented all of our technology strategy, our investor strategy, and our operation strategies while we raised and deployed $130 million in joint venture capital. So I have this really unique experience on um, fundraising, building businesses, the, operate, the, the operating side of things. And while I was with that company, it was a really, um, it was very sexy, very lucrative, um, really exciting career, to be honest. And I had such a unique experience because I was taken under the wing of the CEO himself and taught everything that he knew. And while that was incredible, while I was there, I was not intrinsically motivated. And it was because I really wasn't reaching back and pulling forward groups of people that look like me or came from a population like mine. And I call this group or this community the underdog. And so these are communities that are indigenous. I'm in, I'm Native American, Hispanic communities, uh, communities of color, people of color, women. And um, so I ultimately ended up leaving that career in pursuit of creating something of impact for underrepresented communities, the underdog. Simultaneously, I'm witnessing my sister who has been in the beauty and barber industries for the last 14 years. And she has done absolutely brilliant things in the industry. She has built nationwide salons. She's built beauty academies across the nation. Uh, She's deployed salons and beauty academies in in New York, Colorado, Texas, and California. And she's literally scaled thousands of beauty professionals throughout her career. And it was through witnessing her and in conversations with her. And I asked her, you know, how, Nikki, how are you going to really create something that impacts the industry at a large level? And her answer is what shocked me. It was, well, I'm going to keep using the same things that I've always been forced to use. That's Craigslist and Instagram. And I was so shocked in the response because me coming from a polar opposite industry, which is, to be quite honest, these industries that are seen as like professional industries, they're seen with a certain level of credibility and stature, right? Like oil and gas, technology, startups, business, like it's a, people respect those industries to some degree higher. There is a big stigma when it comes to the beauty and barber industries. And that stigma is that this is a last resort career, that it's not a chosen profession. And because of that, all of these other industries that I was in, I had access every single day to uh, career tools to help me find advice and education. So I would use LinkedIn 
or rig up or dribble or behance or github all of these all of these digital tools meanwhile my sister and my cousins and all of my friends who are in the beauty and barber industries are being forced to use craigslist and instagram as their primary career tool and so that really it was what how handsome was born was a fusion of my career and my sister's career coming together to really create something unique for the industry so that people in the industry can earn more income, can level up in their career. And so what Handsome is, is a career and education network specifically for um, the entire ecosystem of the industry to find advice, education, and, and community. And when I say the entire ecosystem, what I mean is we are not built just for hairstylists and barbers and makeup artists. We are built for what I look at as the pyramid in the industry. So you have the brands that have historically sat at the top, like L'Oreal, Redken, Babyliss, Bumble and Bumble, um, then the educators and salon owners, and then all of the technicians uh, that are working behind the chair. And so Handsome is one of the only platforms that actually serves all three major players in, in the ecosystem. It's a very big overview of what we do, but um, yeah, happy to dive into smaller details around what we do and why for sure. Okay. Um, first of all, I love, uh, I love your story. And um, I love the the whole combination between your, your sister and yourself <clears throat> coming together and doing this. Um, okay. So, so if someone's watching the show and they're like, okay, so I hear you, but what, what, what's on the, on the app? Like, so I download the app and, and uh, what is my experience and what am I going to be looking at? Yeah, that's a really good question. So we have three main centers in the app uh, to make it very simple. So the first center is a community center, and that's where you ask for advice that you really can't ask anywhere else. You know, So people are asking questions like, how do I upsell my clients? How do I fire a client? I've been out of work in California for seven months, and I'm taking clients in my garage. What am I at risk for? These are things that you're not putting out there on blast on Instagram because that's a client-facing tool. It's a marketing tool. So this is a community where you ask questions behind closed doors, like you're in the back bar, right? So that's that's the first piece in our community center. The second center we have is an education center. So this is where we're aggregating education across the industry. So we have industry exclusive education from in-person to digital to events. Um, and then we also host what we call microdose education. So microdoses are micro audio education served in 30 seconds to three minutes. We did this very intentionally. Hairstylists, are, they're, you're on your feet all day. You're moving from client to client. You have three minutes in between uh, clients. So we made audio education that you can get inspired and motivated by listening in three minutes or less. And we work with the industry's biggest names and celebrity artists and barbers on our platform to create microdoses and mastermind education in our community. So we work with Jenny Strebe, uh, Travis Parker, Jesse Klaus, um, DC Connolly, uh, we have a rod, the barber on our platform. So a lot of really big names that are coming in and creating this microdose audio education. So people can get inspired throughout their day. So they're kind of like mini podcasts. Um, the third center that we have is a reward center. And here's where we work with the brands that I mentioned, like, uh, Babyliss, Alpha Parf, Andis, Clippers. And what brands do is brands have product samplings that they have to get out to the clients, right? And they have to get out to the stylist, which is their gatekeeper. And traditionally, way, the ways that brands have done this is um, they would go door to door. They would go to salons, right? And so they use a distributor and they would distribute out like small samplings of products that they're trying to get out. Well, Handsome said, we're going to help you take that digitally. And now what we do is we work with big brands, as an example, Babyliss or Andis Clippers, and Babyliss will offer and sponsor, uh, let's say $10,000 worth, worth of clippers through the Handsome platform. Babyliss also wants to educate their community. So what we've done is we've created this really beautiful flywheel where Babyliss uh, creates a series of microdoses with a rod around the Babyliss new FX silver trimmer. And then at the end of that, if you listen to all of the microdoses, you're eligible to redeem a free pair of Babyliss clippers. And so it's created this really beautiful opportunity where the brand is getting their education out, they're getting their product out, and then the professionals are learning more and earning free product by being in the platform. I love that. And yeah. they're uh, spending a lot more time on the platform too. That's brilliant. Love yeah, that. Yeah. And the end goal really is to get more education in their hands, you know, because today it's all been, um, 
to be quite honest, brands have tried to keep their education separate, you know, so they'll have their own platform, but it doesn't work for this kind of industry. Like everyone in the industry knows that stylists will mix mix different products together. They'll use something from Wella and from Redken. They'll use Babyliss Clippers and Andis, and they have all of these tools that they combine together. So having separate platforms hasn't worked for the industry. So what we are doing is we're bringing them, we're brand agnostic, bringing them all into one so that a pro can learn from every bite-sized piece that they need to, so they can advance in their career. Nice. So who is, uh, who's like your, do you have a, like a segment of the industry that is uh, adopting this, like, like uh, more so than others? Like, is there, are there, are there groups that uh, are, are your, make up the majority of your, your, uh, what's it called? Customer or user? Yeah, that's a good question. So initially, right when we launched um, our hypothesis was that it was going to be hairstylists, you know, because hairstylists dominate. They're the largest population in the industry. Uh, my sister was a hairstylist. That was the the most target market that we knew. And so in the beginning, it was hairstylists and it started to very much evolve into barbers as well. So we have equal amounts of hairstylists and barbers that are both creating microdose content and mastermind content and also um, engaging in the platform at equal rates. And, and same, same with brands, actually. So we have similar it's about 50 50 when it comes to barber brands and men's grooming brands to uh, hairstylists, hairstyling brands. And so it's been a really great uh, 50 50 combo. Those are the two majority. And then we also have um, makeup artists and nail techs. Okay, cool. Well, what about like um, suite owners versus salon stylists? Do you, uh, do you I, it, I feel like um, if I was in a salon and I hadn't heard of yet about you, um, I feel like I, you know, I have, cause you're off, I feel like what you're offering is, uh, so the community side, for example, you know, talking in the back room, I can think of some sweet owners who would love that because they're, you know, they're by themselves and they don't get to have a chance to like throw stuff, uh, up against with each other. Um, yeah. but they also like the younger person who's like digitally native and, uh, they're looking, you know, a lot of these young people I talk to, they don't. Um, they don't really seem like they plan on sticking around anywhere for a long period of time. They look like they're just trying to like, you know, get a certain amount of experience or build a clientele to a certain point and jump to their next move in their career. And I feel like that would be so powerful for somebody that is got that kind of more entrepreneurial mindset. I don't know if you can speak to that at all. Yeah, a thousand percent. You're right on Robert, because in the industry in the last five or six years, um, what we've seen and what I've seen very clearly is there has been a massive rise of the independent educator, right? And so that was a that was a, a um, reaction to Instagram. So Instagram came out, then hairstylists finally had a platform. Uh, they all started, like many of them became specialists in their own craft. And they developed these large uh, followings. And then many of them became independent educators, whereas before they all they were always educating underneath a L'Oreal or a Redken or whatever it was. And so about five or six years ago, we started to see this rise in the independent educator. And simultaneously, there was this rise in salon suites, you know, and so people want to be their own boss. They want to be an entrepreneur. They already are. They already are. Like you're managing your own books. You're building your own clientele. You're doing your own brand on Instagram, like you are an entrepreneur. I think that what was and what still is lacking is the mindset and the terminology and the claiming of, I am an entrepreneur. You know, even though I work in a salon, I am an entrepreneur. And so um, I think that there's a, a huge rise both in independent educators and in salon suites, salon suites, even you saw with COVID, you know, even more so because clients were more comfortable if they weren't in a big space salon. And so what we're seeing because of that is professionals now more than ever and professionals are seeing it too is you are having to go to another resource to find education because you cannot just turn to your left and ask your friend that you've been asking for the last 10 years or ask your mentor, or you're also starting to realize my mentor only knows so much. They're only a specialist in X, Y, and Z. I need to branch out. And so that's exactly where Handsome comes in is opening up these pathways so that you can have more access to um, personal conversations and feedback and advice. And like, how do I get 
how do I get from A to A to B? How do I get from A to C? Totally. Nice. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, before we wrap this up, uh, I would love, I think we should give uh, our, anybody who's viewing uh, a chance to see, see the app. We do like a little walkthrough. And if you're listening on podcasts, I'll tell you exactly what we're seeing. So you can kind of like, if you're sitting in your car, um, then you yeah. can just kind of follow along, get an idea. Um, yeah. So I'll do a, a quick little walkthrough. Um, it's probably just like a minute and a half or two minutes. And so this is just a video demo. Um, makes it easier for me to go through. So right here, what you're seeing, this is our community center that I mentioned earlier. And in the community center, this is where you can see a series of microdoses, people you can connect with. What's really different in our feed is that there are a lot of people posting um, the preliminary work. It's not, you know, the, the really glammed up last done look. And there's a lot of questions on education. There's a lot of education being shared. Um, and see, as an example, anyone have tips on gaining new clients as a barber student? These are questions that like people are asking all the time. How do I grow? How do I succeed? Um, right here, we have masterminds. So within masterminds, um, as an example, here's Travis Parker's mastermind. He goes in and he creates challenges for his community week over week. My hands and friends, welcome to masterminds. I'm Travis Parker of the Travis Parker Academy, and I get to hang out with you for the next eight weeks. So what we're doing is really creating more access to these elite hey, educators. What's up, welcome back to Challenge Five. Here we are past the midway mark and you guys once again are crushing it that fringe and challenge so what people can also do you can see here we work with presley poe uh, nina tulio karina hernandez um, and then what the community can also do is uh create their own clips in responses to masterminds adding 15 minutes to my schedule has been a game changer not only in consultation but having the ability to do a brief before picture and an after picture and really showcasing your work so what we're doing is we're creating an interactive education in a digital way. Um, this piece right here is our microdoses. So this is the micro audio education. What's up, y'all? It's Kenny Duncan, and I want to tell you the three steps to getting a softer beard. In terms of our education and microdoses. What's up, what's up, people? My name is Naja, known as the Naja Nail Guru. I've been in the industry for about 17 years, and my specialty is reflexology pedicures, celebrity we're being really intentional about who we're bringing on uh, to create microdoses and masterminds in the beginning. So they're going through a significant vetting period. We wanna make sure that the information is quality and high scale and we don't get inundated with um, information that's oversaturated and not trustable. Um, so this last piece right here is a reward center. This is where we work with brands. And this is where brands offer exclusive products uh, if you listen to their education within the platform. So this is one from Bolo. Here are three tips to master your tone of formulation. You know, it's, it's been my, in my nature to always keep record of clients because I, I don't have a great memory. And, and as I've collected information... So as an example, what a professional does there is they listen to the series of microdoses and then at the end, they're eligible to redeem uh, one of the products from one of these uh, reward partners. So that's just a quick high level overview of uh, of what the app looks like. Hands map. <laughs> that's so cool. It's so exciting. I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna have to get on there uh, now that I'm I've seen it. I'm like now I've really not really. I'm like I can't believe I haven't got on there before. But uh, let's go, story. Robert. Get on the app. Come on. Yeah, this is cool. Um, I'm excited. So so basically, anybody out there that's looking to connect with hairdressers, they're looking to learn. I did. I, you have the not only like you know, the stuff that goes over audio pretty good is like more business, inspirational, uh, mental health, motivation, um, but also the craft. There's also technical education on there too yeah. in small increments. I one of those videos was like ten minutes, and uh, that's awesome because like a ten minute to learn how to do like a technique is. I don't know. I'm excited for you. This is awesome. Yeah. I'm excited for the industry as well. Thanks for sharing with sharing with us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We're we're definitely excited. It's um yeah, it's been really fun and the industry's adopted it really well. And um, so this is just the beginning and we're really excited for what's to come. Awesome. Uh well, so before we wrap it up, do you have any um, you know, if there's a person if there's a person out there that is, uh, you know, maybe you can speak to who exactly 
needs to get on this right now. You can give us like a like a couple of different uh, examples of the person if they're they're where their heads at. Like one, I would imagine is I am about to graduate school and I'm thinking about whether I should go out to a salon or straight into a suite. You know that yeah. I could imagine that there's probably t- ton of Tom stuff on there about that. Uh, but is there anybody else out there? Can you speak to anybody else that needs to get on this right away? Other than, yeah, obviously, there's... other than everybody. Yeah, totally. There's multiple. So there's one, if you have any question in the industry at all, like, which is everyone, <laughs> you know, yeah. but if you have any questions, it's get on the app and ask and see what conversations are happening. And in the community that we've built, we've been so intentional about it. It's a really open community and really welcoming. And so people are giving advice all the time. Um, but the other one is like, there are, there's so many industry professionals out there that are just working so hard, almost like, um, blindly, like there's these blinders on to build their Instagram. They're just focused on building their Instagram following. And for me, those are the professionals where it's like, don't just focus on building an Instagram following. What is that going to do for you? What is that actually going to do besides getting likes? Like if you haven't learned how to monetize it, you haven't learned how to work through with brands through your Instagram. You haven't learned how to actually get your target audience um, through marketing on Instagram. You're wasting a lot of time trying to build this platform through likes. And that's the key people is like, use Handsome app to learn how to do those things, to learn how to make more money, to learn how to monetize on Instagram, to learn how to get clients on Instagram, to learn all these things. Whereas Instagram, it's, a, it's like a popularity contest. And so I think that one of the biggest things is that big population of people that are blindly building their Instagram and they don't understand why or the formula. Those are the people come to Handsome and learn a lot more as to the whys behind it. And we can help you grow in different ways. Nice. Love that. I'm sure there's plenty of people listening that that you just spoke to. Well, thanks again so much for coming. And uh, next time I'd love to hear about your thoughts about the future of the industry. I'm sure you have an interesting vantage point doing what you do and work with the people that you work with. Uh, But we'll save that for next time. So again, thank you so much for coming on the show. Likewise, Robert. Thanks so much. All right. Take care.